So two months ago, I shot a review video on this knife right here. This is the Dark Bolt Designs Stratus, and I love it. And I love this knife for a couple different reasons, but primarily because of this design right there. This little tab, this little button, if you will, will actuate the liner lock and allow you to deploy and disengage the blade very, very easily. And new designs like this are coming out all the time. For example, we've got knives uh, like the Spider Co. Smock. And while this is not a new design, it has also inspired knives like this one. This is the Vosteed RS Chaos. And it got me thinking, is this the future of button locks? Is this what we are seeing where we are moving away from the plunge lock design like you see on the Civivi Sentinel Strike towards something more like this on the Dark Bolt Designs Arcus where instead of actuating a spring, it actuates the lock. I'm Roll Chambeau, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And today we're going to be talking about the future of button locks. I'm a firm believer that here in 2023, we are in the golden age of knives, knife design, and knife making. Uh, and it's a beautiful thing because when innovation happens, we win. Us, the enthusiasts, the users, the connoisseurs, the collectors, we win because we are presented with more options than ever before at a variety of different price ranges. And I'm going to talk about all of these knives. These knives all have uh, some variation of button lock, and we will go over that. But before we do, I want to talk about what the standard for a everyday button lock would be. And that's going to be something like you'd find here on this CJRB Pyrite. Uh, this is what is essentially a plunge lock. So what we all generalize as a button lock is actually, in fact, a plunge lock. And, I wanna show you how it works. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and take this knife apart real quick. So this is the cross section of a CJRB Pyrite, one of the most popular button lock knives out there. And I just wanted to show you how this works real quick. So what we have right here is the plunge. Behind this plunge is a spring that keeps tension moving this way. When it's pressed down, it actually releases the blade because the blade is going to travel along this track right here against the tang of the blade right there. So there is no detent in this system, which is why sometimes with button locks, the detent can feel light. However, that pressure between the plunge and the tang of the blade is what causes there to be any detent or any resistance whatsoever. Also, that means that for this to lock into place, what has to happen is the spring has to keep pressure going this way. Some of you may remember when the Vostied Raccoon was outed for having failed mini spine whack tests and not very hard spine whack tests either. And that's because it was causing the spring to jump and also make the plunge jump off the ramp, which would release the blade and not cause people to have a whole lot of faith in the knife lock itself. That's an example of why springs are not always the best when it comes to knife locks because you're very dependent upon that spring and how it's going to react to certain jolts. Also, it can be difficult to manufacture a plunge lock correctly because there also has to be a ramp on the blade, which usually occurs right there on the tang, and that's what the plunge is going to fit into to lock it into place. So those things are really, really easy to get wrong. If your tolerances are off by even a little bit, anything, any jolts can cause it to engage in that ramp and release the blade. That is a traditional plunge lock, and that's what we're going to start with. With all of that being said, it's important to talk about why plunge locks are so 
popular and it has a lot to do with ease of use and the new fad in the knife community called fidgeting and you know i don't necessarily agree with what makes a knife fidgety as far as most people are concerned i tend to think that how well a knife is made makes it fidgety but we'll use the common terminology to define why this phenomenon has happened where all of a sudden button locks are insanely popular some of my most popular videos are on button lock knives like this Civivi Sentinel Strike. So why is it that people seem to gravitate towards this type of locking mechanism despite the fact that it is not the sturdiest or most foolproof knife lock? Well, for one, it has to do with ease of use. You can open a knife by pressing and holding down on the button, you can close it, and that's a one-handed operation. That's very, very popular. Another reason is, is that it keeps your fingers out of the way of the cutting path when you go to close it. And that is a safety thing. So what it lacks in overall strength, it makes up for in safety and ease of use and making it, well, very fidgety. And let's be honest, we all have that one friend, maybe you are that one friend, uh, who likes to do this all day long. But I digress. Uh, there's no doubt about it that button locks are very popular for their ease of use and the fact that you don't have to worry about cutting yourself when you close it. They are often considered ambidextrous because of that. For example, I am not left-handed. Here it is my left hand and I can close it easily without worrying about anything. That's not something that you can say for most liner locks and frame locks out there that have to be completely redesigned to be used well with the off hand. So is there a better option? Well, I'm so glad that you asked because in fact there is. Let's start off by talking about one of the older variants of a what I consider to be a button lock. This is the Spyderco smock. Now the smock is different because it actually uses this tab right here to engage a compression lock. There is absolutely no springs in this lock. Instead, it's just this tab that you can press and it allows you to actuate this the same way that you would a plunge lock. It is a bit more heavy duty because it relies on the lockup of that liner, but it does also provide for a couple other things. Unlike a plunge lock, this one actually has a detent ball, which means that deployment is going to be more reliable and more snappy while also maintaining the way that you can keep your fingers outside of the cutting path. It also creates for a smoother fall shut action at the same time. So this is definitely considered a improvement over a plunge lock because it's a stronger lock overall. You still get a real detent and it doesn't hurt the action of the knife. That makes the Spyderco smock extremely popular and extremely fidgety. So why haven't we seen this more prevalently in other knives? Well, for one, it's because up until recently, Spyderco has owned the patent on the compression lock and it has since then expired within the last couple of years. So now we are starting to see more knife companies move to a button style compression lock. And first and foremost, we have the Vosteed RS Chaos, formerly known as the Vosteed Mayhem. And lo and behold, this utilizes what they call the top liner lock, but don't be fooled by the vernacular. It is in fact a button actuated compression lock and it is fantastic. Much like with the Spider Coast Smock, you get a detent and the action is perfect. It is extremely fidgety and it also keeps your fingers outside of the cutting path of the blade when you go to close it. One-handed operation is a breeze and it's paired with the rock solid lockup and reliability of a compression lock. Next up, very similar to the compression lock, but by no means the same, we have the Dark Bolt Design Stratus and Arcus. And you might be wondering, well, it looks kind of similar, right? You know, it has this liner right here. You press this tab and it releases the liner. Uh, so that's the same thing, right? Well, kind of. Uh, it's different because whereas the compression lock is actually up here at the top and locks in at the top, and you can only actuate the blade by pressing that button, on these dark bolt design knives, you can actually still use the liner. So instead of sandwiching the tang of the blade between a stop pin and the liner, this one actually just allows for you to actuate the uh, lock 
by using the tab to actuate the liner. Also, this little bolt right here is going to be popping out and that also helps with stability as well. But this has uh, multiple stop pins. This actually has two different stop pins. And so it's a very, very sturdy lock, very solid lockup. And it also allows for the ease of use because if you want, you can still use the liner to actuate that lock. So this one is going to offer more options and very similar stability to the compression lock without actually stealing any IP or any design language. That's one of the reasons why I think that these dark bolt design knives are so freaking sweet because it gives the user options. And unlike with the compression lock, you can actually unscrew this tab altogether and still use the knife like a liner lock that still has two stop pins. So this is pretty impressive right here. And it goes to show that they took an existing idea and they adapted it to be used for people that rather prefer liner locks. But in this case, the liner lock can be actuated with this tab. And just like with the compression lock and with the plunge lock, it keeps your fingers outside of the cutting path while maintaining a real detent that you can take advantage of and enjoy with some smooth action to boot. This is a great time to mention that these are not the only alternatives to the traditional plunge lock design. There are in fact many, many others who have done great alternatives that provide better strength with maintaining the same benefits that you get out of a plunge lock. With that being said, I just simply don't own all of them. And if you have an alternative that I haven't checked out so far, now is a great time to mention that let me know in the comment section down below because I absolutely love them. I'm really curious to find out, is this the future of button locks? Are plunge locks going to fade or will there always be a demand for a very light duty knife lock that is extremely fidgety and can be found on knives that don't cost a lot? One of the main benefits of a plunge lock is that you do find it on cheaper knives. This knife is under a hundred bucks and that's not something that you can say about the other four knives on this table. So with all of that being said, personally, I don't see them fading into obscurity so much as just becoming less popular on more expensive knives. And personally, I don't think that they should be popular on more expensive knives because if you're spending hundreds of dollars, why not get a more sturdy knife lock that's going to stand up to more abuse while still offering the same benefits that you find in a plunge lock? I'm interested to see what your thoughts are. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let's have a conversation. And if you want to watch more awesome knife content, make sure you click on the video that pops up next.